The year is June 2019, and the Golden State Warriors franchise has reached rock bottom. A squad that had previously risen to the top of the basketball world as a dynasty had fallen in the flash of an eye. The Warriors appeared to be bound to a horrible end, and Steph Curry appeared to be nearing the end of his remarkable career in pain. The doubters had no idea that Golden State would not fall. The following season saw planned rebuilding, excellent trade selections, and incredible improvement from previously unknown players. Three years after the 2019 Finals in 2022, Golden State reigned as NBA champions once more. So how did they pull it off? How did the Golden State Warriors transform a roster consisting of aging veterans into a vibrant championship team? You are watching One Athletic, and this is how the Golden State Warriors rebuilt a championship team. The Golden State Warriors are a force to be reckoned with in the NBA from 2015 through 2019. Three rings, four Western Conference Finals, four Western Conference Finals appearances, and a thriving star-studded core that showed no signs of slowing down anytime soon. This story begins in the 2019 NBA playoffs when Golden State was looking to add another ring to their collection. They wanted a repeat, but their expectations were dashed when the terrible injury bug visited the Warriors' locker room. The Warriors not only lost the NBA Finals, but they lost devastatingly and disastrously. Their star-studded core had burned out with many key players dealing with serious injuries of their own. But they were able to return to the top, trading KD with D'Angelo Russell. Kevin Durant, who had been with the franchise for three seasons, left in free agency for Brooklyn in the summer of 2019. Durant appreciated his time in Golden State, but he wanted to prove to his critics that he could win a title elsewhere. Durant also had a conflict with Warriors veteran Draymond Green, with whom he argued on the bench during a game in November of 2018, during which Green allegedly told KD that the Warriors didn't need him. The team's general manager, Bob Myers, devised a strategy that would provide the Warriors with D'Angelo Russell in exchange for KD. The Warriors negotiated a sign-in trade with the Brooklyn Nets in which Kevin Durant was sent to Brooklyn in exchange for D'Angelo Russell. D'Lo would then sign the contract he desired in Golden State, giving the Warriors a huge asset to their team. The basketball world didn't realize it at the time, but this deal was critical to the Warriors' future titled prospects. D'Angelo Russell was not an ideal match, but he was a valuable asset who could be used in another trade to get a critical component for the Warriors. Durant could have left Golden State for nothing, but the Warriors' front management made a smart move that provided them with an all-star guard. However, the Warriors started the 2019-20 season by playing terrible basketball, and it immediately became clear that the squad was not the same contender as it was in the past. For the first time in what seemed like an eternity, the Warriors were knocked off atop the mountain of basketball and hurled into the depths of numerous losses and blowouts. But despite their defeat, the Warriors were plotting. Their focus was on the future, and Golden State front management was poised to make one of the most significant moves in franchise history trading Russell for Wiggins. D'Angelo Russell was the elephant in the room throughout the 2019-20 season. Because of the bad fit between him, Steph, and Clay, the vast majority of NBA fans predicted his future would not be with Golden State, and a trade appeared unavoidable. On February 6, 2020, a flurry of articles in the NBA Globe announced that the Warriors had acquired Andrew Wiggins, which delighted Minnesota Timberwolves fans but perplexed Golden State Warrior fans. The Golden State Warriors have thrown everything on Andrew Wiggins, a risky move that may be the difference between a title and sitting at home. The Warriors' 2019-20 season came to an abrupt end when the season was postponed in March of 2020, and with no invitation to the playoffs, Dub Nation's focus was no longer on the playoffs as it had been for so many years. The 2020 Draft Everyone's attention was focused on the 2020 draft this time. The Warriors entered the 2020 draft lottery with one of the best chances of winning the first overall choice, and they finished second. The Warriors had an opportunity to add some great young players to their seasoned core. The Warriors were primarily interested in two players, LaMelo Ball and James Wiseman. Wiseman would fill a significant void in Golden State's roster. Golden State, drawn to Wiseman's potential and skill, selected him with the second overall choice, ushering in the official formation of the Warriors, youthful core players. Kelly Oubre Jr. from OKC was traded to the Warriors. Oubre would provide much-needed two-way play, but the Warriors prioritized defense with Kent Bazemore and Gary Payton II. They would become an important part of the team. 
But the real addition to the roster came from individuals who were already on the team. Jordan Poole and Juan Toscano Anderson would develop into valuable members of the team, and the Warriors were ready to defy the expectations of the 2020-2021 season. Curry needed to show the NBA world that he was capable of, as Golden State's 2020-21 season was an up-and-down roller coaster packed with frustration and anticipation. In year 12, Steph Curry played some of the best basketball yet, scoring a league-leading 32 points per game with six assists of a blistering 42% from three. Curry was back and ready to lead the Warriors to victory, but he couldn't do it alone. As a starting small forward, Andrew Wiggins, who was acquired in the D'Angelo Russell trade, fit in wonderfully. Wiggins provided the squad with athleticism, promising defense, and an average of one block and one steal per game, in addition to 18 points per game. The Warriors' young core was also taking shape, with Jordan Poole rising from the shadows as an important rotation piece. The 2021 Draft The summer of 2021 for Golden State was one of the most critical in the franchise's history, and it started with the draft. The franchise received the number 7 pick from Minnesota as part of the D'Angelo Russell deal, as well as their own number 14 pick. Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody were taken at 7-14, and 14, respectively, as high-potential players who could develop into stars down the road. The Warriors subsequently signed Steph Curry to a 5-year, $215 million contract, a well-deserved bag for the franchise's as Monarch. The Warriors guaranteed defensive guard Gary Payton's contract just before the season started. The second finalized their roster after an offseason spent accumulating depth, and the Warriors were prepared for the challenge ahead. Curry was the ship's captain, with Draymond and Wiggins standing tall behind him. The Warriors exceeded expectations in the 2021-22 season, winning 18 of the first 20 games. Golden State's depth was much better than expected, with fierce shooting and disciplined defense. Players like Otto Porter Jr., Gary Payton, Nemanja Belica electrified the second unit. Jordan Poole drew the most attention. Poole's scoring figures have increased considerably from 12 per game the previous year to 18. He shot 36% from three and 92% from the line, leading the league with four assists. The center was manned by Looney and Draymond Green, who provided electric inside defense. During previous championship runs, the Warriors had lacked a real rim-running big man for years. Kevin Looney fit that role wonderfully. He was a constant, competent player with a strong defensive presence who blended in nicely with the Warriors' style. Andrew Wiggins had become everything the Warriors could have hoped for as a 3 and D wing. Andy was an all-star for the first time in his career. Return of Clay Thompson Clay Thompson has potentially fought his way back from severe ACL and Achilles injuries for two and a half years. Countless players in his situation would have given up, but Clay fought on and was almost there. Killer Clay was back in January 2022 game against the Cleveland Cavaliers, sending every center into a craze with his famous three-point stroke and deadly right-handed hammer. The second Splash Bro had triumphantly returned, and fans were excited to see the big three of Draymond, Steph, and Clay take the court once more. This excitement, however, was immediately dashed when Steph Curry hurt his left ankle in a March 2022 game against the Boston Celtics. Steph eventually missed the rest of the regular season with this injury, but did not miss any time in the playoffs, sending a sigh of relief around the Bay as the Warriors finished the season with 53 wins. Win against the Mavs. Only the Dallas Mavericks, headed by budding superstar Luka Doncic, stood between the Warriors and the NBA Finals. Golden State needed to halt Dallas' rising momentum, and they succeeded. The Warriors defeated the Mavericks in five games to get to the NBA Finals. Steph Curry had a 23-point average, Klay Thompson had an 18-point average, and Jordan Poole had a 16-point average. Andrew Wiggins stole the show on defense, holding Doncic to 37% shooting in games 4 and 5. Unlike in the past, the Warriors team was not built like a super team. Instead, this club was filled with underdogs and players who had been passed over by prior teams. Golden State was back in the finals with swagger in their step, and all it took was four more victories. Winning against the Celtics The Golden State Warriors' final opponent on the grandest stage in basketball was the red-hot Boston Celtics, and they were no ordinary foe. The Warriors were vulnerable for the first time throughout their incredible run, and the Celtics appeared to have more talent. To add gasoline to the flame, Steph Curry sustained a left foot injury in the fourth quarter of Game 3, putting the Warriors at a significant disadvantage. One more loss would put them on the verge of elimination, and their chances of reclaiming the crown would be finished. But it wasn't the end. Curry, who was playing with a left foot ailment, went off for 43 points and 7 triples. Curry opened Game 4 with a pair of three-pointers, even motioning to the Celtic audience. 
Steph had 24 points the second half, dominating down the stretch, scoring clutch shots after clutch shot and leading his side to victory. The Warriors continued their dominance in Season 5 as Chase Centers, Andrew Wiggins, had 26 points. The Warriors continued their dominance in Season Game 5 at Chase Center. Andrew Wiggins had 26 points, Clay had 21, and Gary Payton the second and Jordan Poole combined for 29 points off the bench. They had a 3-2 lead and were returning to Boston for Game 6. The Warriors demolished the Seas 103-90, with Steph Curry adding a spectacular 32-point performance as the cherry on top. The Warriors had accomplished their goal. They were the reigning basketball kings once more. The entire team contributed to the triumph. Draymond Green, who struggled early in the series, secured and invigorated his squad with his defense and playmaking. Andrew Wiggins also supplied lockdown defense. Otto Porter and Jordan Poole provided three-point shooting off the bench, and Kevin Looney and Gary Payton provided an impressive two-way play. Finally, Steph Curry, the man in charge of the team, had one of the best playoff series of his career. His prize for this accomplishment was not just a championship, but also a finals MVP. This just proves how unbreakable and resilient the Warriors dynasty is. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll...